Hello. Hola. This video is gonna be a little bit different than the usual. Have you guys ever wondered what we were thinking on one of these passages that we make? Particularly the one that we just completed, 14 days from Guatemala all the way to Florida. For a thousand nautical miles on our tiny little sailboat, Sersha. We're gonna give you guys the insider scoop the real deal. A little commentary of what we had on our minds throughout the sale. If you want the full videos without commentary, be sure to check the links in the description box below. But stay tuned because we have a lot of things to talk about that we did not share in the videos. It's gonna be fun. We're leaving Guatemala. It's a little nerve wracking starting a big trip like this, just because you, you don't know what's gonna happen out there. And we've just spent so much time being in the marina that you kind of get a little used to it. <laughs> we don't typically go to marinas and this place was just amazing. It was like a five star resort. Unfortunately, we left without our motor working. And we knew that that was going to be a challenge. A challenge. <laughs> and right now we're getting towed out by the marina manager. And there was a lot of wind and current. So it took him a couple tries to get us. And that's what you can see here. He's kind of like going the wrong way just because of all that. And then um, we always have to worry about our solar panels because they're tricky just because they kind of hang off of the boat thankfully they swivel so it's not like they're super rigid and fixed and are gonna break yeah it sucks saying goodbye to all the friends that we made um we definitely want to be back in that marina we want to go back to guatemala eventually we're not sure when it'll happen but we're definitely gonna go back we just didn't get to explore as much as we wanted to because if you've been watching we did a lot of boat work and boat projects while we were there that's why we chose that marina it had a full workshop and just it was set up so well for it now we're just basically floating out here which <laughs> you know it's a big river it's not like anything to worry about but it's kind of like you keep that in the back of your mind that you basically are dead in the water um we did have the dinghy side tied and it took us a few tries to to get the steering right on it because we're tied at the hip so it was a little bit of an adjustment period i think we did like a loop right yeah, in front of the did. marina right <laughs> yeah i was thinking they were kind of come back and rescue us <laughs> Oh, I want to point out about this flag. You're going to have to check out at the end of this episode because it definitely got its wear in the 14 days that we were sailing. There's a lot of those launches running around. They're like water taxis. They're all over in the Rio Dolce and they're pretty cool. Um, but it was, this was an exhausting trip to get to the mouth of the river, just being side tied like this. We had kind of a, not a time crunch, but we had already overstayed our visa. So we were heading to check out, um, but we had to stop in a cove prior to the area where you check out because Livingston, where you check out, is very known for folks taking things from yeah. your boat. A lot of theft. A lot of theft. Petty theft. Oh. And while we were in Guatemala, the spiders invaded our boat. All of our lines were 100% covered in spider webs and yeah. spiders. I and mean, eggs, ugh. egg sacs were all over the place. I think we ended up picking spiders off our boat even when we got to Florida. 100%. Oh, that night when we got to the anchorage, we, um, was that? Are we at the anchorage yet? Not yet. No, we're about to anchor. Okay. 
But yeah, once we get anchored, we go have dinner at this. What was the restaurant called? Jack's. I forget. Texas, Texas something. Mike's. Texas Mike. Uh, he's a expat that set up shop down there, and uh, he has an amazing chicken fried chicken steak. <laughs> Not normally on our diet, <laughs> but you know, you gotta splurge every once in a while. <laughs> I think most cruisers have a very big cheat meal before they go out on a long sail. Yeah. It's a pretty sunset. Uh, before we got going, we had to calibrate our autopilot. Our new to us autopilot. Yeah, new to us. What's, what's what did we name him? We I still forget. haven't named him. We still haven't named we him. We actually asked everybody to name him in the comments, and most people autopilot. did say Wilson <laughs> number two. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. being replaced, so Meh. We actually I don't like that name. name. We'll still have to choose one. Yeah, we'll have to figure something out. Feel free to but we ended up doing, what, like five circles to get it right, yeah. calibrated correctly? Super early in the morning. Yeah. And then we got on underway once that happened, which... Going down the Rio is really peaceful, especially in the morning. Not a whole lot of boats, and it's just so calm. I wish we didn't have the dinghy motor running. Uh, we tried to sail, but unfortunately we were heading right into the winds. <laughs> At this point, I'm in the dinghy. Bo's flying the drone. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Because I do not fly the drone. It's always interesting landing and taking off the drone because both of us need to be, you know, away from the wheel. So having an autopilot is huge when it comes to that. Yeah. It's very hard to convey our feelings in these videos. And this was one that when we first arrived in Guatemala, it was nothing like we'd ever seen before. And just even leaving, being able to see that canyon as we're going through and going through the river and going through the green and hearing the birds. It was just so beautiful. And it's just, it smells nice. <laughs> yeah, the foliage is something you don't see a lot of. Well, at least we haven't seen a lot of sailing. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first time we seen anything lush and green was when we got to the island of Hispaniola, which is like Haiti and DR, yeah. um, but not being surrounded by it, you know, it's just on one side of the boat. So being in the Rio was breathtaking. Checking out can be a little nerve wracking, um, especially when you're new to a country. You try to do the research prior to getting there to understand what kind of paperwork they're going to need. and. Checking out was pretty easy because here in Guatemala, you normally try to work with a agent that you already set up the payment and you already let them know that you're ready to check out. So yeah, it was easy. The entrance to the Rio Dulce, there's a big sandbar, like a barrier, and it's a little nerve wracking getting over that even though we don't draft much we only draft three feet nine inches we were trying to get out because we knew the wind was in our projection going to be nicer than the rest of the week so we knew that we needed to get out as soon as possible or at least that was what was predicted yes so and oh yeah here's when it broke because it was so rough um, one of our lines broke. Mm. It, the line was a little worn as well, so that didn't help things. But we acted pretty quick and resolved it. Yeah. Uh, in enough time to not drift into the sandbar. Because <laughs> there is like a little channel that you try to follow to get out. And there were towboats. There were towboats around mm -hmm. as well, because I think they had just gotten done towing someone out or at least following them just in case they needed them most boats that have a larger draft usually over five and a half have to get listed so there is a boat out there that will take the mast and pull it over and have you you know kind of go sideways unfortunately one of our friends experienced this and he was heading out and 
actually lost his mast. So make sure your chain plates and everything's in perfect working order before you uh, go across and do any listing if you plan on going into Guatemala. Man, we struggled putting this back together. Yeah. But we did a good job. Funny though, look at Bo. Is something different about him? Have you guys ever actually seen him wear a hat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look so weird in a hat. Yeah. They just look weird on me, so I don't really care for them. But it was really sunny out and had a hard time seeing, yeah. right? Yeah. At least I had a shirt on. We were hoping to get over the sandbar and then lift the dinghy as soon as possible. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. No, it didn't. <laughs> we were originally going to go across the way. There's a, a spit of land that jets out. We were going to anchor right around there somewhere and just stay overnight, raise the dinghy there. We should have done that. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, we decided... No, we to couldn't keep. because we would have had a tack, tack, tack over there because it was coming from the east. Oh, so we because we had to. a good angle mm -hmm. on going north. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. And we'll swap places. Then you can steer from here and keep us pointed into it while I raise the main. So we were going to swap spots and I was going to jump out of the dinghy brandy was gonna jump in it and i was gonna raise the main but but i didn't want to get what one and two bo weighs more than me so we know that the dinghy is better with him in it so why not just have me raise it <laughs> yeah which was fine which was fine we were trying to raise it as soon as possible so we could get bo out of the dinghy and he didn't have to keep getting completely sopped and it's just a waste of gas and uncomfortable and yeah and the dinghy was just kind of <laughs> getting bashed around mm. which i don't know it we had debated on even just dropping anchor right there and raising the dinghy but we thought that we could get to a calmer spot to do it later so raising the mainsail is not difficult it's just a pain in the butt because we have to put the top two slides into the track itself and they get stuck within this open door that we have. So that's kind of a little bit of a pain. Plus we were, I mean, we were already pointing into it so it wasn't that bad. It was a nice, easy way to raise the sail. Sometimes the, heavy. yeah, it's not, it's not too heavy, but yeah. sometimes the lazy jacks um, mm -hmm. catch up the sail as well. Like, cause we have um, partial, battens in our sail yeah. and those like to get stuck in the lazy jacks yeah but you did a good job thanks raising her up well we always try to switch roles up here and there because we want to make sure that both of us are aware of how each other's doing it and especially myself i don't tend to go forward very often because i feel like Bo can take care of the sails much better than i do So fun fact, um, we didn't have an autopilot installed for a little over two years. <laughs> so we definitely know what it is to hand steer and we've actually hand steered a lot of our career because sometimes when we did get the autopilot, he decided not to work. <laughs> Yeah, the problem with the wheel pilots is they can't really handle too heavy a seas. And yeah, it's just, he's noisy as well, right? So you, noisy. You get annoyed with him. Yeah, I actually have to turn him off just to hand steer because I can't stand hearing him go off. And this guy was a little bit more quiet, but still not quiet enough. It is fun to be behind the wheel, but yeah. not 24-7. No. So we have this little handheld anometer. <laughs> yes. Super high tech. Very high tech. <laughs> the good thing about it is it only costs 15 bucks <laughs> and if it breaks, we can toss it and get a new one. 
It was crazy that I actually caught this on so film because we'll be talking about it later. But well, also the hole in our boom, Bo we'll created see. because he needed to put cheap box on the boom and we didn't have a rivet gun. So that was the only way for him to attach them by through bolting. We try to forecast for the weather at night just so we can get it set up roughly a, a good sail plan. That way we're not, you know, running into squalls and scrambling on deck at night trying to reduce sail. So we drop our whatever large canvas we have and try to put up smaller canvas. There's nothing worse than when we are sailing and we do have a larger sail up and Bo has just gone to sleep and I have to wake him up. <laughs> so it's much better to go ahead and just sail a little bit slower if we need to. But we had already seen in the forecast that it was going to be stronger. So dropping it reef, reef early. What is the saying? Uh, reef early, reefed often. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and since we don't have a roller furler, for all of the, you guys who want us to get one, we would love to have one. However, at the moment, it's not in the budget. And we actually do enjoy having four different head sails that we can put up in different conditions. Yeah, it's a little more work, but, you know, it's... A little? <laughs> a lot more work, but it does give us that variability with different winds. If we were to rip a sail, then we have another sail to put up. It doesn't get stuck in the roller furler we have our reasons however we know that it would be much more easy if we did have a roller furler yeah pros and cons yeah. pros and cons for everything yep we're going 2.2 knots right now we actually use the uh, app navionics it tracks our sales it gives us our speed it tracks how fast we've gone through a certain range so we really like it. We've never had an issue with it. It always gives us good, good tracks. Yeah. Good things to follow. <laughs> As I'm folding up the sail here, uh, Brandy noticed the uh, cargo ship <laughs> that you can kind of see in the screen. They were pretty much on a, head, a, a collision course with us. Celine, Celine, That's... Celine. The primary thing of always having somebody on watch is watching out for big container ships or any ships coming right at you. <laughs> and most of the time they see us, they, they veer off. However, we want to make sure that they do see us and communicating because we're just this little bitty thing out there in the ocean floating and he's a big thing and we want to make sure that we're not going to be in their way. We err on the side of making sure bigger Ooh, objects don't hit us. <laughs> well, commercial vessels uh, always give them the right away. We're just the Absolutely. leisure, yeah, leisure cruisers. And never assume that they're paying attention, right? right? Exactly. Yep. It's always good to hail them and let them yeah. know that we're floating along. So let's talk about reefing the main for a minute. We actually always used to use our electric motor as an assist to lower and re then reef and then raise the the reefed mainsail. Well, um, <laughs> however, since we did not have our motor, I Good. was trying to point into the wind without the use of it. Yeah, because that was just how we've always known mm -hmm. to do it. And yeah. I've never researched any other way. But thanks to you guys, a lot of you guys commented and said, hey, why don't you just loosen the sheet, get the, the mainsail pointed into the wind a little more um, without actually being pointed into the wind. And uh, that would make it easier. So we do appreciate you guys giving us that info. We've been out here for four and a half years and we are still learning. We just want to share what our journey has been like. And this is kind of, we're constantly learning and we're not perfect at it. You're never going to see our sails perfectly trimmed or. <laughs> yeah, we're, um, as long as we're moving in the general direction at a decent <laughs> speed, 
<laughs> and decent for us is like four knots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then we're happy. You know, we don't stress about those things too much. If we did, we wouldn't be able to be out here. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a, a fine balance, but we are we are always looking to improve. I do have a book on like sail trim and such, so I'll pull it out every once in a while and and try to get a better understanding of different sail configurations and reading telltales. And as you can see, we are still towing the dinghy. At this point, we are kind of frustrated because it's slowing us down. We know that we need to raise it up, but it's just been too rough. Yeah, I think we're going like one and a half to two knots right here. Right. But we knew there was nowhere to go anchor to lift it up, and we did not want to do it while we were sailing because it's too rough. We're going about the same speed, but way more comfortable. It's actually really calm. It's very comfortable. Yeah. Oh man, you guys, the chaffles are the best thing for underway. Weeks. Chaffles is a cheese and well, egg mixture. It's literally it. one egg to a quarter cup. Bashing. Yeah. Half a cup, quarter cup quarter of cup. cheese. And then in the mini waffle maker. But we make sandwiches out of them and it's perfectly tasty as a sandwich. Kind of a keto fix hack. Yeah, they're, they're good. Mm -hmm. So we get asked a lot about night shifts and the watches that we take. So we've tried three-hour shifts. We've tried one-hour shifts. We've tried it all. But more or less, it's kind of like what we used to do when we took long trips in the car, that whenever the other person was tired, we would go ahead and take over for the other person. And that's kind of how we've worked it this way, too. Huh? Yeah, sometimes it works out to where... Uh, actually, a lot of times it works out to where I'm, like, up for five hours. And then Brandy will pretty much take the rest. So it's almost like we're on, like, one shift at night each, yeah. right? Yeah, like, I typically take that sunset to 12-ish. And then you take it. And I typically am sunrise. Yeah, you typically get the sunrise. This is my filming here <laughs> <laughs> but i do enjoy the sunrises and is it ah, i feel like oh maybe it is because the first night actually the dinghy line snapped we didn't mention this in the in the video but it snapped on my watch thankfully we did have a second line which brandy convinced me to put on <laughs> because i was I was like, oh, no, it'd be fine. <laughs> you know, one of those things. I just didn't want to do it. T-shirts with it'll be fine coming to a shop near you. <laughs> yeah, so that's my saying. It'll be fine. Uh, not always the case. <laughs> but it, it was a bear to get that thing back and get another line on it. Typically, if both of us are up, one of us will helm while the other person is tacking. It just makes it easier. Not difficult at all. It's just, why yeah. not? If you're sitting there, right. go ahead and do the tack for us. Plus, it's something to do. Yeah. <laughs> it is nice to just sit and stare. and You don't really want to do much, but the, the few things that we have to do are enjoyable. Eating food is one of the highlights during passage making. It can be a little tricky depending on the sea state of making the food, but when you're eating it and just hanging out, watching the, the waves roll by, it's, it's, it's nice. We've tried to do a little of the cheating and we just seem the more sugar we eat during these passages, the worse we feel. We get tired easier. We get crankier easier. So we do try to keep. Yeah. Same with chips, nice. even like yeah. anything that we don't typically eat. Yeah. It just makes the passage that much more worse because, yeah, we're, we're throwing our bodies off. <laughs> So 
So we had spent all morning really trying to find somewhere to get this dinghy up and this little island is the first island that we saw that we would be able to get in easier and easy out. Um, we had been tack, 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 tacking. We were exhausted at this point. Just because of the, the wind conditions, they were blown right on our nose. We were happy to have found somewhere somewhat close to, to drop anchor. You can tell by the sun, it was later in the afternoon and we knew we needed to get there sooner than later because it was right off of Belize. So there was a lot of coral and a lot of reef. Yeah. So we needed to make sure that we were going to be in there safe and sound. And we had our eye on another spot, but it was a little bit more tucked in and not having the motor to be able to get in safely. We decided to go here, even though we knew it was going to be a little rougher, but not as rough as we got <laughs> dealt <laughs> we perfected our anchoring under sail uh technique in the bahamas i wouldn't say perfecting no but we practiced a lot. well yeah i we got pretty good at it mm -hmm. let's put it that way way back when we were very adamant about not using the motor and just using our sails for most everything. I find that it was good to do that because in situations like this, we already have been prepared for that. So we didn't have to learn it under stressful conditions. Oh, man. Pretty little island though. Remember how we pointed out this earlier in the episode? Yeah, it sheared off. Yeah, the outhaul was one thing that we didn't check before we left. Uh, we did a general inspection of mostly everything, except for this. You think you have everything covered. You check all the chain plates, the rigging, you go up the mast, you everything we've checked. <laughs> and there's one thing that is always going to possibly go awry. But you just kind of have to roll with the bunches sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you do the best you can. Yeah. I had to put in a long a hex head bolt with a nut. And unfortunately, that causes problems with our sail shape. Because of the hex head, I was unable to put tension on the outhaul. Even though the anchorage was pretty bad, we've been in worse, but the problem was is we actually needed to raise the dinghy and the motor, which made it a little more complicated, but we could have kept going yeah. to find a different anchorage, but it was getting later at night. Yeah, and we didn't want to drag the dinghy anymore because it was slowing us way down because it's so heavy. The motor weighs 110 pounds and the dinghy... I think weighs like anywhere. 4,000 pounds. <laughs> it, it weighs probably about 150 to 170. I think we have our system down pretty well at this point though. Yeah, and a motor hoist is something that we would like to get, but I don't think it really would have helped us too much in this situation other than Brandy being a lot closer to help me out with the motor. And let's just say lifting it is much easier than lowering it in these yeah. star sort of conditions, which we find out later in the uh, sail. Hold there. Hold there. Holding, holding. We swore that we would never do this again, <laughs> but we end up doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At this point, too, we're so tired because we've just been tacking. And even though it's ripping, we just wanted to get it up there and get it over with. So we no longer had to deal with it being behind us because we knew it's not safe to have behind us. It could get swamped. It could get well, it, many things. The line broke on it yeah. and that was a struggle. Right. Even though it was an ideal situation, we were happy to get it done. Yeah. And like I said, there was an island just behind this one here, but because of the coral reef, we didn't want to risk it, especially being later at night. And I think, at what point did you decide in your head that you were, we were going to stay the night? Because we had actually debated to keep going. I think once we got the dinghy up, I was 
pretty okay with <laughs> resting and staying the night in the past during longer sales I, i've been kind of impatient and just wanting to to make the best time and get there as fast as possible but over time and experience i've learned that it's just not worth it take things as they come and and enjoy the process basically so as you can see it's already super late i mean we kind of raise this into the night the sunsets already happened yeah thank goodness we had the spreader lights working because yeah. for a while there they weren't right but we got that all squared away in yeah. guatemala right right and there is no good solution for our dinghy other than getting a smaller one and of course right now the wind is blowing yeah. max speed We've got an 11 foot Kareed that we got in the USVIs a couple of years ago. It's huge. So uh, we're looking for something a little smaller. If you guys have a favorite brand, let us know in the comments below. Holy hell, am I tired. I remember being so exhausted. Yeah, this was a good call. Good call. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> 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 Done. Oh, wait, what I'm doing is we had already been filming so much that I was dumping all of our cards. I figured might as well get all of our cards dumped. So this is something a little bit more behind the scenes that maybe you guys don't um, realize. realize or see that we only have so many data cards to be able to keep all of our stuff. So yeah, we, we were trying to keep it organized. And we always dump them to two external hard drives. We come from the wedding industry and losing data or losing files is like the worst thing that can happen yeah. pretty much. How many of you guys actually knew that we were wedding photographers? We knew nothing about videography, so. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's a whole nother beast. Completely different beast. Because yeah. with photos, it's just the photo. Yeah. But with video, it's audio. It's all of it. All of it. Yeah. A lot more moving parts and good night <laughs> as much as i'd like to say that we slept well that night we didn't usually we are pretty good about hanging well in a rough anchorage and being able to sleep but it stormed as well which we didn't capture but at least we got something we were so exhausted yeah it really didn't matter yeah the storm kind of kept us up a little bit um, but if you guys didn't know, I'm blind. I am nearsighted and I can't see without glasses or contacts. <laughs> that is the first thing I do in the morning. That has been a problem in the past. We've had some emergencies and Bo needed to be up and Adam. Yeah, there, there are a few times I rush out on the deck buck naked. <laughs> No, no sight. No, no glasses. <laughs> He's like no a mole. Contacts. It's like yeah. a mole coming out of a hole trying to help. But it's almost like a sixth sense. It just kicks in. You just take care of what yeah. needs to happen and then, you know, go back to what you're doing. This uh, is our morning coffee process. And no, we do not have a gimbal stove. We actually do a cold brew cowboy coffee ish. We just soak coffee grounds in water and let it sit overnight. And then we strain it the next morning and heat it up put some butter in it and some other goodies yeah it's uh quite delicious definitely a pick me up <laughs> nothing like a sweet sip of coffee after a long exhausting evening <laughs> look at the roll on that it was crazy but it was such a beautiful anchorage it was so cool there i wish we had time to just chill for a couple of days and explore it i would have liked to have gone and seen the reef system I, but yeah. But no we, go. Yeah, we had a mission, so. Yeah. And now we have to pull up a grid and find out which way the coastline of Belize has a barrier reef that has nice protected water. We were debating on sailing the inside of that or going to the outside where it'd be a little more rough. A lot of other sailors tend to go that inside route because it's calm weather, it's calm seas. But we decided against it because the wind wasn't really in our favor and we would have difficulty getting outside of the the few cuts that they have. Without um, a motor. Yeah, sometimes you have to choose uh, safety over comfort. Just activated the bolus. 
As you guys probably know, if you follow us, um, we do not have a electric windlass or a windlass that operates properly. <laughs> like we do have a manual windlass, but it's seized up and I need to get in there and, and see what's going on. But stay tuned. Yeah. Because something's coming. <laughs> well, it, it really stinks that we didn't have one in this situation because it was very difficult raising the anchor. We were trying to sail onto the anchor, up to the anchor using the mainsail, which was really difficult to do because the current was really strong right here and the wind was right on our nose. So I had a very difficult time trying to tack and tack and tack. But we eventually got it. Yeah. I did end up hurting myself a little bit. I uh, pulled an ab muscle. You guys can't see it, but he's literally touching his abs <laughs> right now. I'm <laughs> touching where it was hurting. <laughs> and some people have commented that uh, I didn't seem like myself later in the video is because I was mending my wounds. <laughs> I was hurting and Brandy ended up doing a, a few chores that I would typically do. Remember when we used to not even have a snubber? Yeah, like the <laughs> first couple rough anchorages, I was I didn't even know about snubbers. Yeah. Somebody told us about them in Grenada, I think. Or was it Bahamas? It had to be Bahamas. It was Bahamas. Yeah. With the snubber, I just use a rolling hitch. We don't use any kind of hardware. All of our lines, we don't use any metal no. hardware. I just tie knots because, I, I don't know, I just feel more secure and safe just tying knots than I do with hardware, especially if things break. Now you got this piece of hardware whipping around. Oof. Yeah. It's not fun when you have these kind of conditions and you're pulling up a 55 pound anchor an electric windlass in any situation I think is not a bad idea. You know, yeah, you can pull it up by hand, but if you do get injured or whatnot, now you're kind of screwed. Exhausted. I was so ready to get out of that anchorage. Uh, not that it was going to be any better out on the ocean because <laughs> it gets a lot rougher. We sailed off anchor and it's another good skill set I think that we have in our back pocket for situations like this. Oh, it was Ooh, rough getting out of here. It was really I forgot rough. about this. Yeah, yeah. So we had to backtrack a, a, a little bit to get around that barrier reef. <laughs> but the wind was in our favor because we we're on a beam reach here. Look at that flag. It is crazy. It's going nuts. <laughs> this yellow suit. I'll tell you about it later. But <laughs> The rubber ducky suit is what we call it. We actually don't have proper foul weather gear because we've always just been sailing in the south and we don't really need it. Oh, here's an example how we can't pull. Oh, the outhaul. Yeah, we, we're getting bagginess. Mm-hmm. I feel like I look absolutely ridiculous. You look like, uh, what's so, that? Uh, the fisherman, Gordon, Gordon Gordon's, Fisherman. Yeah. <laughs> right off of a front fried fish finger box. <laughs> but it was nice because it did keep us um, dry. For the most part. Until Bo ripped it. Yeah. <laughs> coming later. Uh, I was wearing the pants and you were wearing the jacket. We actually had two jackets. Oh, what did you spend? Ten dollars on these? A piece yeah, it wasn't in Guatemala. Much. Yeah. Guatemalans don't really need foul weather gear, so we couldn't really find anything. We looked at kind of the secondhand shops and stuff where maybe sailors donate it, but they were all too big. We couldn't use any of them. It looks even better when the wind's in it. And we don't have a dodger. We we've used many different wave protectants, I guess you could say. Our best one was a tarp. I did wake up one time and Bo was wrapped in a tarp like a burrito. What are you singing here? Rubber ducky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You make bow time lots of fun. 
I think at this point we could have been a little delirious, but it was nice to no, stop we at just, that anchorage and got some sleep. Yeah, we were just having fun. You, you kind of have to have fun with everything, you know. It's, otherwise, what's the point? Here, I think that we, because we did have that overnight sleep, it was kind of a start over. About day three is when we kind of get into our routine of sleeping and waking and everything kind of seems normal as normal as it can be on a boat <laughs> yeah but because we had that that little rest period we kind of got out of the groove yeah so now this was kind of starting it all over again i think it's going to be just best if we go to the outside and have nothing to no obstacles to worry about outside of ships Since Bo wasn't feeling well, I pretty much helmed most of this day. He went to sleep pretty early and I helmed all the way into about midnight. I don't remember it being too bad, just kind of waves breaking, yeah. splashing, that sort of thing. I mean, it was, it calmed down in the morning. You can see with the clothes moving in the background, I'm trying to make eggs. <laughs> and that's pretty difficult on a induction soap, which is nice though, because it kind of helps me cook it. <laughs> yeah, it, it does a natural swirl yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. But being in the galley while you're underway can be nauseous, nauseating. nauseating. Yeah. Whenever we can, we make cooked food. We spent two, three solid days prepping food yeah. We had enough food to last us a month. Our staple is coffee, so we are always <laughs> drinking coffee. Some people say not to drink coffee because it makes you nauseous, but I find the opposite. If we don't drink coffee, oh, we man. get nauseous. We tried that once, yeah. remember? And you did not do well. No, I didn't. Yeah. It, yeah, so we actually drink coffee. And I think a lot of people do wonder kind of about seasickness and things like that. And I think after a while you get in a groove of what you know is going to make you sick. For us, we don't have that motion sickness. Thank goodness. I know that there are a lot of sailors out there who do and they just suck it up and I feel so awful for them. But they do. There are good meds out there that help. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing is we live on our boat full time. Like there are periods where we do get to see land, but for the most part, we're always on the boat. Our sea legs are pretty strong. Yeah. <laughs> when we get on land, it is kind of awkward. So the flying fish, it's kind of disheartening here and there. We'll get <laughs> dead fish on the boat. Sometimes we use them as bait though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is case in point. We had three reefs in and Bo was sleeping and I didn't want to wake him up, so we were only going probably under two knots here. It's not very... What's it say? Point. Um, oh, wow. Point one, or 1. 1.4 knots, but I just wanted to let him sleep a little bit longer because he had just gotten off shift. So in certain situations, it is what it is. I'm not going forward to release the reefs without him. We kind of have a rule that we don't go forward without someone else being in the cockpit. It's just not safe, well. even in low wind. Over around midnight or so, and he just went to bed around five. Our boat really isn't set up to be operated single-handedly. We enjoy the fact that we both have our roles and we do them. But in certain situations, we have to swap roles. And yeah. we like that. Our boat is set up so simply. I mean, it could be set up more efficiently, if, of course, but we know how each uh, of us does our roles. Now, do the others do the role perhaps better? Maybe. But as long as we can do the role, we're good. So since Bo wasn't feeling well, I decided I would take on putting up... What did we put up? The Mac Daddy? The 180? I think it was the 180. Because we had no win. Bo had shaked out the three reefs that we had in the main. And this is me trying to get out the <laughs> sails. We have 
I don't know, six sails in here? Yeah, five. Our cockpit lockers are humongous. We could both fit in there and probably go to sleep comfortably. Oh yeah. <laughs> we can we can store quite a few bodies Sir, in shut. each one. <laughs> one time we had forty five coconuts. Fifty three. Fifty three coconuts and one locker alone when we came from Bahamas down. <laughs> Boat loaded us up. But our cockpit is nine feet long. Sersha's a 1971 35 foot Pearson, and nine feet of that is the cockpit. Which, Which is... can be a good thing or a bad thing. If you're just hanging out at anchorages and marinas, it's great to host people. But if you're going in open oceans and We're following seas, especially, yeah, uh, you get swamped, mm -hmm. then that is not a good thing. This is coming from experience. This has happened to us once, and thank goodness only once. We were heading south on, on a passage, and a, a system had just passed. The wind switched, and we got this rogue wave that broke over our stern. It was so crazy. It was instant, like came out of nowhere, and our backs were to it. And we had Una in the cockpit. Thankfully, we had... Put, all of our life vests on. Yeah. She had her vest on. And we had all of our camera equipment down below. Because I think um, there was rain from the storm that had just passed. Yeah. But it took... All it, of our life vests went off. Yep, our <laughs> life vests went off. And it, it tried to take Una away. She was literally He's like swimming, swimming in, in the, the cockpit. cockpit. And I think I grabbed her vest. Mm -hmm. Um, it happened so fast. Yeah, and it took a while for the water to drain because our our drain scuppers in the cockpit aren't that big. I think they're maybe two inch, inch and a half, two inch, and there's only two of them. But yeah, that was not a good situation. Let's talk about our fishing game. It was horrible when we first started. <laughs> it we wasn't horrible. Well, when we left, we didn't even leave with the right equipment. Yeah, we kind of left with just stuff that people had given us. Yeah, we had not I had no idea what I was doing. We um, never fished off of a boat. Yeah, no. I mean, a John boat for bass in the lake with my dad, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I went out a few times with my college buddy. We learned a lot. Uh, I picked up our first trolling rod in Georgetown in the Bahamas. And from there, it's uh, it's just gotten better and better, especially with the help of Mike and Megan. They're uh, two amazing anglers that run a charter out of uh, Puerto Rico. And uh, when we first met them, they actually took us out on charter. And you can watch that in one of our older episodes. But we caught so much fish. It was a lot of fun. And it wasn't even a good day, they said. <laughs> yeah, they, which we were blown away by. They recently hooked us up with more gear, and we've done really well. More knowledge. Yeah. So we could actually go faster than like half a knot. So if you guys don't know what our... Fishing on the East Coast, of or the Eastern Caribbean, there's a lot of sargasm, at least when we've been there that it's been hard to want to drop the hook in because you know it's just going to get fouled up. Yeah, you have to be diligent about clearing it. Yeah, and also get a nice, what do you call it, the hook thing? Hook thing. Oh, gaff. A longer yeah. gaff because we started off with a short gaff. I yeah, think. and then Mike and Megan hooked us up. They were it. like, what are you doing with that little <laughs> yeah. bitty gaff? And then practice with it because yeah. it's, it's not intuitive on how to use it. You gotta like hook and pull straight up. Also, I think a lot of people think maybe nets would work. I, For us, we just don't want to store that. Yeah, plus um, some fish, you, they're just too big to net. You don't want to really net a mahi, they're gonna jump out of it. Yeah, yeah. maybe, I don't know. But, but this trip was nice because when we leave, when we left, when we left uh, Guatemala, we provision, but we also provision for ice, and if you need just in it, case just we pick up some fish. Yeah, which we did. <laughs> so we're glad that we had that. 
Uh, one cool thing about the cruising life is that we meet people and, you know, unfortunately we have to say goodbyes, but we make instant connections and deep connections right from the get go. Yeah. And one way or another, we somehow end up running into the same people over and over, which is great. So it's not saying goodbye, it's saying see you later. Kudos to Bo for all of the years of video game playing. So he's gotten very, <laughs> very good at flying this drone. We fly a Phantom 4 Pro, which our lovely friends over on Sailing Uma, Dan and Kika, gifted us. And we really like it because it's easy to catch um, and for it, me. And it can handle higher oh, winds. Mm -hmm. We have friends who have like the mini Mavericks and, you know, the smaller Mavericks and it doesn't seem like they can fly in the same stuff that we can. And we haven't had any issues Ooh, with it. knock on wood. Well, so <laughs> except for like me and my skills, they've gotten better. But in the beginning, I wasn't as good with bringing the drone in for Brandy to catch. We've had some mishaps. Yeah, I've got the scar to, sh to prove it. <laughs> but these drone shots are just... The sunset ones, I think, are probably some of my favorite. This actually coming up is one of my absolute favorite shots that we've ever gotten of Sersha with the sun going through the head sail and the main sail. It's just spent spectacular. I, th I just really love it. It's right here. And I don't know what runs through your head when you're actually filming this. Do you know that that's what you were trying to do? Yeah, so uh, when I'm flying the drone, I have maneuvers and Wait for ideas. It. Yeah, that's cool. Uh... <laughs> I, I have maneuvers and ideas that I want to capture, but there's a lot of like jerkiness in between. Oh man, is there? <laughs> and I don't necessarily want Brandy to use that stuff. She's gotten way better with editing and not using that stuff, but in the beginning, like she would use some of that stuff and I'm like, no, I didn't <laughs> want that. It, makes, it just kind of makes my videography kind of look bad. My <laughs> drone flying. Um, uh, a lot of people, I think, were probably wondering what the heck we were laughing at here. And we actually saw a green flash, which is pretty infamous. And the uh, it's elusive, elusive, put it that way. It's it's cool to see when you do see it. Yeah. Nighttime. I, what are you talking about? Here? I think that a lot of people, gosh, I feel like I say that a lot. Maybe even in myself, I thought, man, the nighttime sales were going to be so scary and I can't see anything, but I believe I was saying that nighttime is my favorite, especially when the sky is just lit on fire with the stars and no moon or even full moon. But when you see the bioluminescence and a trail behind the boat is even it just makes it. I don't know. It's like seeing stars in the water and in the sky. It's just really that is the best. Yeah. Actually, the best bioluminescence we saw was sailing into Illavash, the south end of Haiti, because there it was these huge jellyfish that were just like Exploding. light. Yeah, they were exploding. Yeah, it was so cool. It was like little landmines. And just seeing those things for the first time, I wish we could capture more of the nighttime photography and videography, but it just is pretty impossible. Yeah, it's it's tough. Oh, day six. Um, here, we're kind of just showing our day in the life of sailing out in the ocean. I feel like this is the epitome of what I was looking for when we started sailing, to be able to be forced to relax. We don't have Starlink or anything like that, so we're not connected except for through our Iridium Go, which is a satellite device. So we're able to text here and there certain people and we're able to get our weather, but it's nice just to feel alone. Yeah. <laughs> Solitary. Like not feel the need to be doing anything. Except for trying to keep the boat going forward. Well, which is super easy. I mean, yeah. the boat practically sails itself. Um, it's nice to just feel like just sitting there staring out at the ocean is all you need to be doing 
and that's what we do a good portion of the time outside of filming of course filming does take up a lot of our time yeah filming and then thinking about like what to film and how we're gonna portray the story well we really want to not the story i mean we're just kind of filming our life but we also want to share with you guys almost take you on the boat with us so it's getting those certain angles those certain sounds actually i believe day six starts when we we decided we're not going to put any audio in here other than the waves and the wind we had no music from here on out for the rest of the eight eight days that we sailed uh, which I really enjoyed. One, it was saved me time on looking for music, but two, it just really kept us in that vibe of being on the boat with us. Yeah, for sure. I, I enjoy it more without music because, you know, music it just takes away from it. It can add. Sometimes, yeah. But it's so, it's but so particular for people. That and it has to be the perfect song, which is... it. We've spent hours and hours and hours trying to find the right song for the right segment. And sometimes you nail it, sometimes you don't. Yeah. So it's it's difficult. And for me, I feel like the waves nail it. <laughs> yeah, and you do a really good job with the audio engineering. Oh, like thanks. making it, making the waves and wind sound right for, especially the drone shots. Because the drone doesn't capture any sound at all. So Brandy has to like pick out the right clips for that and make it sound like what it should sound like from that point of view, which is really difficult. But yeah, this day was a fun day to capture because it's just literally pure sailing. It's just a lazy day. I mean, yep, we ate, we slept, (laughs) we sailed. Somebody commented, that's all you're doing. Yeah, that's... Oh, our burrito. (laughs) So uh, we make a burrito. So we leave our table up, but we pull out our comfy topper for our mattress out into the salon area. And it folds up nicely and it's like a built-in Lee cloth. And if we want to, we can lower the table and put it down flat, which I think eventually we do. I don't remember. Yeah. But it's super comfortable because you don't move. Yeah. And you're cushioned from all sides. So yep. it's like a gigantic burrito. And it was nice because the, yeah. the weather was cool enough. You could be comfortable because down further south, it's so hot, especially when you're pointing into the wind and you're going into the wind. If you're going downwind, the wind comes into the cabin. But yeah. you, we don't keep any of our windows, our brand new beautiful windows open under sail because clearly we're going to get a lot of splash. Yeah. So when we think it's going to be a stormy night, we, again, reduce sail just to play it a little safe. If it looks like anything on the radar. Yeah, even potential. But there are times when... Opportunities. Yeah, opportunities (laughs) when we leave full canvas up. It Mm -hmm. just, it depends on our gut feeling and what Mm -hmm. we're seeing. And, you know, we have, what, four or five years experience doing this now. So we have a good gauge, for the most part, of what the night's going to bring. Those spreader lights, man, they're perfect. We got really lucky with this sail because we pretty much had a full moon the entire time. Yeah. And that's really nice to be able to sail with because you can see the waves and the direction that they're coming. And you can see the skyline. So you can tell when clouds are rolling in or... It looks a little more ominous than <laughs> it should be. They always look ominous to me. Ominous. 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 <laughs> Scary. <laughs> yeah. Gloomy. So before Bo went to bed, we decided to go ahead and change the configuration. We're taking down one of the bigger sails. I think this is the 150. Was I was strapped one? in? So you I was. You were strapped in on this part. Okay, I was. I was kind of bad and lazy at the end of it with being tethered in and you guys yelled at me for good reason. I should have been, but I do get lazy at times and he gets defiant at times. Yeah, defiant. The better judgment side of me goes away and I do what I want. I Don't do what I want. 
And believe me, you guys, I yelled at him too. <laughs> he has promised more tethering for the future. Yes. If he leaves the cockpit to go forward, he's tethered in. One more time, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, another beautiful sunrise. Mm. We are halfway, well, starting halfway there. <laughs> Calm winds sometimes are is worse than strong winds because at least you're moving forward. Yeah. When it's light wind, it's you're, kind of a pain. Right, because you're constantly, well, we're constantly changing sail uh, configurations and tweaking the sail to try to get a little more speed out of it. These little fish stayed underneath our boat for hours. <laughs> there was two of them. But when you know there's no wind... You just, you're just like, meh, whatever it is, what it is. And you just relax. Yeah. Which we did. We did. And good that we did. Because at this point, we weren't even halfway into the sails. It, like distance-wise. Distance wise. Yeah. We were just past Belize. And we weren't even past Mexico. Belize. We, we weren't? weren't. I don't believe so. I think we're like right, right, there. right at the border of Belize and Mexico. So this whole time we were waiting to get picked up by a current. There's a really strong current that moves north. So if we had, so now hindsight, if we had not stopped at that island, we may have made it quicker, but everything works out for a reason. We're happy we stayed. But yeah, because there was a really strong north wind that was projected to come through which it did. It just came through a lot earlier in our uh, sailing trip. And further north of us. And yeah, way further north. But we were projecting to be in that area had we had the right wind. So just like Brandy said, it all worked out the way it was supposed to. Yeah. Here's our high tech, our high tech windinometer again. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll we'll grow up and put real instruments on our boat. But it works for now. It know? really doesn't matter. Because at this point, there's no wind. And I'm just saying we probably should just go ahead and drop all sails. Because it's better just to do that than to wait and listen to the sails beat themselves up. It's that, so annoying. Yeah, you don't want your sails rubbing. Mm -hmm. and Yeah, that's never Slapping good. Slapping and the gooseneck is taking a lot of, yeah, and the traveler's beating. taking a beating. Yeah. Oh, actually, right, I'm, between it wasn't and we were dropping. Right we were going to put up the 180. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. well, we have the 150 up at this point. Or the 100? Maybe we can double yeah, the 100, because we had it for the, the night prior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Bo has to move the blocks back. Our 180 is so humongous that it takes up two thirds of our boat. It's it, it is massive. massive. Like actually, in all reality, we probably should block it past our winches <laughs> and have it run back to the winch. Okay. But we haven't tried that configuration no. out yet. I mean, we have a winch that's further back, but it's not self tailing. Oh, and man, are we spoiled now? Pretty much, we are. We're. Once we get a taste of the finer things in life, <laughs> we, we, we understand why people uh, do it that way. It's just way easier. Having so tilling winches, especially with that 180, it's a big sail. You crank forever on it. Yeah. It is a light sail, though. Mm -hmm. It's not very heavy, which is uh, really nice. I mean, it's bigger than our spinnaker, isn't it? Yes, way bigger than yeah. our spinnaker. So we did have questions about spinnaker use. Um, because we are heading north and the wind is coming from the north, we're pointing into it so we wouldn't be able to use the spinnaker. Um, we have an asymmetrical spinnaker and really those are only used for downwind. Yeah. Or not asymmetrical, symmetrical. Symmetrical, yeah. Either broad reach or dead downwind is what we use the spinnaker for. Mm -hmm. So having this big sail and these light, light winds, it does benefit us. And Sersha is only how, how, what does she weigh? Uh, she weighs 13,500 pounds dry. So like not with all our crap in it. 
But, and us. Yeah. With, and our dinghy. And our dinghy <laughs> motor. So she probably weighs 20,000 pounds. <laughs> eh, more like 15 to 16. <laughs> <laughs> I still think the dinghy weighs 4,000 pounds. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of jumping. But it's definitely more than the But we, we were now you can tell, like, we, we got that that big sail up and we're actually making ground look at it it's right next to the winch yeah right next to bo's head it just it is crazy goes way back and that is a huge thank you to ann yes I was just she say has that. our sister ship and um she is on a roller furler system now so she had these sails just laying around and she hooked us up so thank you, thank you ann. again ann you're amazing So I went down below to make some guacamole. This is the time of our sail when we pretty much were in sync with what we were sleeping and standing behind the helm. So we were able to spend a lot of time together, mostly during the day because circadian rhythm, you kind of want to stay up during the day. We would sleep mostly at night. Like you would go to sleep at seven to midnight and then something along that line. Yeah, you couldn't really sleep in too much just because, I don't know, the sun's they, blaring in. Yeah, the sun and yeah, you just like Brandy said, you get in the rhythm. Yeah. So we're up there having our snack, and of course we're watching the the dual sky system here. One side of the boat, crappy skies. The other side of the boat, beautiful. And we had been dodging storms all morning. We were hoping that we were gonna <laughs> dodge this one as well. Like, just sending all the good vibes to push it away, but uh, it didn't really happen. Yeah. It's crazy that the weather can turn on you so in an like instant. Yeah. Clouds roll in and roll out really fast. I still think at this point we were, we were still wondering if it would hit. But once your sense is getting a little heightened... You might as well take action. Go ahead, action. take yeah. action, because what's the worst thing to do? You're just going to have to reset everything up. No big deal. Which for me is a lot, because I get lazy. Because <laughs> I'm the one up there, hemming and Han and hoisting and all that. <laughs> so I do, I do give a little pushback, because I get lazy. But we dropped the head sail first, because it was the biggest part. And we're still full canvas on the main, too, so... yeah. Just trying to get through that process and know that we've got it down in time. And I think we gave ourselves plenty of time. Yeah, it did start to pick up and rain a little bit while I was up there doing everything. Mm -hmm. So I was feeling the, the heat, you know, in a sense of <laughs> trying to hurry things up. People have pointed out, why don't we have another sale on deck deck we used to do that um you know and we we had a smaller dinghy when we oh, did that yeah so now it would really prevent us getting forward we'd be stumbling over said big sail or small sail and it would save some time and in this situation it probably would have been good but safety wise on top of that being needing to climb over the dinghy instead of through the dinghy and the lifelines. That it's another thing to worry about that's up there yeah. because you have to make sure you have it secured down mm -hmm. well enough. Um, and it's still gonna get beat up by waves and, and all that. Right. Oh, and we used to have a uh, downhaul as well to mm -hmm. douse the head sail, but that was something that I would set up prior to our departure and it's nothing that's been permanent because it's not permanent it's something that i don't always remember to do it is really nice to have because it makes dousing the, the head sail way easier especially the huge ones like the 180 and the 150 so that is something that i need to maybe make more of a permanent rigging Priority. system yeah well just it's there, it's always there, and I never take it down. 
So it assists pulling down instead of him needing to tackle said <laughs> yeah. sail, which I'm sure it's fun. It's going to happen at some point during this episode. Yeah, I, I, it's actually already happened. I've, I saw <laughs> myself. Yeah, it? I saw myself tackling it a yeah. few times. Now, also, because the mainsail is the only thing up, I have to make sure that we're still trying to stay into the wind. So we are going as slow as possible in order for Bo to efficiently, effectively, safely. All the things. Rig everything because he probably wasn't hooked in. No, I don't think I was. It's when these uh, things got to get done real quick. And that is when accidents happen. Yes, it is. When you're rushing through things, uh, it is a little more cumbersome having uh, a, a lanyard tied tying you down to the boat. But it's not an excuse. We look miserable. We look like I dogs look, in a sprinkler. I was still uh, recovering from my ab injury. Yeah. So I was being a big old baby oh, right man. here. You saw my face. I was all squinched up <laughs> like like I never felt rain before. <laughs> like I was melting. And typically Bo is the one who will stand out behind the helm and... and Take it over. But he says, okay, I'm going to go in. I don't want to be wet. I'm going to get our rain gear, rain gear our on. Rubber ducky suit. <laughs> but I was being such a baby. Like my, my tolerance was just so low that Brandy braved the cold rain for like, what, 10 minutes it at was least. A good, good 20, 15, 10, 15 minutes. I'm not sure. I mean, when these things come rolling through, it seems like it's forever. You seem like you are just, your arms are sore. You've got all this adrenaline going through your body. It, it was blowing pretty crazy. It was gusty. And yeah. what I'm doing, I, because I'm helming so hard here, our, one, we have a really small helm. I feel like I have to really get at it, but I don't want to back the head sail. So I'm just trying to really go as slow as possible, pointing it mostly into the wind. And I'm really just thinking, hurry up, hurry up, get out here. <laughs> and I'm down there like rushing to put everything on and I'm actually tearing up our rubber ducky suit. Like I destroy the pants. Like I completely rip buttons out because I'm rushing too much. Yeah. Trying to get back out there. But I had it. Yeah, you, you, you did a good together. job. Yep. And I think you get a little more nervous in in these situations i get nervous before the situation during this i'm fine like i don't i remember thinking kind of a badass right now <laughs> you were i figured if i'm getting a free wash i might as well wash my hair too i think that might be the only shower i took yeah we that's a good point. We don't really shower too often when we're underway. We do. I mean, here and there, but it's not a priority. I mean, we're not seeing anybody except for each other. Yeah, and, and we both smell at that point, so we don't <laughs> That's care. That's not true. <laughs> we bathe sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for you to come up. <laughs> oh wait, here you come, I think. No. Nope. I couldn't see up there. <laughs> What'd you do? I was like, well, it's uh, nice that you are going to come out here with your <laughs> it Look at me all rubber ducky up. His, the strap to the overall part got caught in the hatch when he came out. Oh, that's why I went back. Right? Also, we still had a line out, a fishing line. So that's what you're oh, doing here. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't want to actually catch a fish. Going this quickly. Yeah, going through that. And now Brandy's inside filming, well, that was close. talking about... Because we're Hank on, I feel like we... Any minute now, it's it, probably going to get dry. Yeah, and <laughs> basically, <laughs> like I think I was out there for maybe five minutes. It's that. 
if that and it started to clear pass, up, it's which it's really hard to gauge, like we were saying earlier, of how long it's going to last because the clouds are so low that you can't see that far up that far forward right so yeah you can see the sunshine coming in and i'm like yep it's gone <laughs> yeah and a free shower is fine yeah and i am dying in this suit now because it's so hot it, and humid yeah just the the weather changing so drastically is just it gets us every time. There's never a dull moment. There's slow times, but there's never really dull mo moments. I always think there's either yeah. beauty to see or scariness to experience. Something to film. We're never bored. Yeah. People bring that up about boredom, and I think boredom is a choice. If you choose to be bored, then you you definitely can find it. But um, I don't know. We try to we try to focus on what's around us and being in the moment mm. back to eating our snack <laughs> and then calm <laughs> yeah now we gotta like undo everything we just did but i think we wait right i think so yeah we're like no let's enjoy our little snack oh man i got dress dressed huh i yeah. put on like yeah you were preparing for a snowstorm yeah i didn't realize i got like super prepared man i was such a weenie he thought it was gonna last a lot longer yeah it did for sure otherwise i would have just stood out there instead of brandy standing out there <laughs> it's okay lovey i have i had it yeah I feel like yeah. I should just put oh. reverse music on. I got no vest on and I'm not tethered in. So these are the moments where I try to explain to him, yes, there's no wind. But, you know, maybe a an alien sailfish could jump out of the water <laughs> and stab him and knock him off the boat. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. These are the things that actually play through <laughs> Brandy's head. I am the A B C D E F G um H I J K L M N O P <laughs> plan maker Bo is I am A meh. It, it, whatever happens will happen. We're a good yin yang. <laughs> yeah, we definitely balance each other. <laughs> That's for sure. The scale might weigh a little further on my end. <laughs> Bo is notorious for letting this green line this halyard line to our head sail just fly away well it's so long that it kind of catches itself most of the time sometimes not always it always comes back, <laughs> it always comes it, back. it's like a good well-trained dog <laughs> so i'm the winch winch <laughs> When we're raising up this 180, it takes forever to use it. Now, when I was talking about the self tailing winches, self tailing, self tailing winches, very hard to say. It really helps because that top rung of the winch holds tight the tail of your sheet, which is also the line that goes through the head sail giving me more power and I'm actually holding the steering wheel on the other side because we have the autopilot turned off in order to raise the sail. We do have a winch behind me that does not have the self tailing, which makes it a lot harder because then you have to hold the tail in order to bring it in. So this yeah, holding the tail actually puts tension and friction on the winch, mm. which allows it to actually assist you. Yeah, if you can't tell, I am still feeling uh, feeling the, the pain in my abs. <laughs> You're just laying there like yeah. dead. I was not myself a good portion of the sale because, yeah. of, because of that injury. Still laying down. Yeah, and Brandy was kind enough to let me uh, chillax <laughs> and recover. But, I mean, you can tell by the waves that it was a really easy 
pleasant sail at this point now that the the rain storm has passed through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were doing pretty well with the 180. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes we catch things on our yo-yo, which if you guys aren't familiar with a yo-yo is, basically just a ring with fishing line around it. And uh, we have that out in addition to our main trolling rod, uh, just because that is, it's actually really easy to reel in fish and we, we set that a little bit shallower than our main line. Brandy had some butter fingers <laughs> and she she uh, threw it in. I didn't throw it in. <laughs> she, she was um, bored. So. so I was trying to bring it back around because it was, the line was wrapped. So the moment it went over, Bo had already tossed the towel in. It was uh, done for. Plastic was going to be floating in the ocean. No big deal. Again, I, I was not myself. I <laughs> typically don't freak out when things like this happen, but I did in this in, in situation, and it's not like me to do that. In my head, there it was tied off. At some point, I would have maybe had to pull in the entire line, but it's not, yeah. well, it's not tied in. No, so I was freaking out because I didn't want her to pull the line because... The way that it's <laughs> all wrapped in there is it's it's not tied off, but thankfully it Boy. had enough friction to where Brandy could get it. Yeah, I knew it was coming in, and I wasn't gonna go over. And if I did, we weren't even moving. Yeah, <laughs> so we no big deal. we were pretty much becalmed at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, and I mean. It was, it was really low wind, but this was a nice size mahi. Yeah. I try to fillet the fish immediately after catching it, just so it's packed away and nothing we have to deal with later. <laughs> but once we get them all cooked up, we try to sit down and just enjoy uh, a meal together at night. We'll typically throw on like a movie or get into like a TV series. The sunrises and sunsets never get old. <laughs> never. They're just like dolphins. But they are it's always different. Yeah. And they're always and so the different. Are starting to physically roll into one another as we are slowly, oh, I man. Mean slowly making our way north. Just the glow on the sails. I love get capturing that. I love capturing shadows. I love the transom and the reflection of the sun on the boat. Yeah, the different perspectives really give you an appreciation for I don't know your surroundings. Mm -hmm. And really we don't we don't really see these percep these perspectives either. It's not until we go back and actually edit the video that when it all comes together it's just breathtaking. Another morning of brandy shift. <laughs> yeah. Brandy is way better about filming than I am. I just, I kind of get into this, I don't know, just lazy mode. I just don't want to do anything. Oh, to it's fine. You're tired. Lazy. So at this point, we're not even halfway to our destination. Which most people would already be <laughs> in Florida. We had friends who left in the same exact place from where we left without a motor and made it in eight days. Yeah. Sailing Dossier. But they left in... I, I a wouldn't lot say stronger conditions. Yeah, stronger conditions and better direction of wind. So it's been nice to have this huge sail. I see you. Hello. Somebody's a stirring. It looked like a horse popping his head out of a, like a stable. <laughs> But I think this is the day we lose absolute all wind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it it had started earlier, right? In the day, and like pretty much we were not going anywhere right now. I mean, now. at this point, 
we have enough to keep the wind in the, the sails. Okay. But we definitely lose it. Yeah. So what did I make? I think I made um, eggs. eggs and bacon. Ooh, yum. That So bacon is one of our staples. <laughs> if you know us, you know we love our bacon. I'm pretty sure it was already pre-cooked too. Because yeah. bacon takes way too long. We normally just cook eggs. Yeah. Underway. We don't like refrigerating eggs or freezing eggs. They turn out really weird. But yeah. So with our eggs, no matter if they were pre-refrigerated or not, we always leave them on the counter. Every once in a while, we'll get a bad egg, but most of the time, they stay pretty, pretty good. Oh, here we are <laughs> flogging around. So with the sails flogging like that, yes, we could have them up and hope for the best. But they're just beating themselves up. They're going against the spreaders. They're going against the trowels and the the stays. The stays, all of it. So, yeah, it's just wear and unnecessary yeah. wear and tear. A lot of people, for some reason, during this time, was asking about our center board. So, gosh, coming out of Curacao a year and a half, two years ago. We think we may have hit a whale or something and we sheared off our center board. We have not replaced it. We actually removed it completely. And we so, haven't um, known any different. Yeah. Honestly, like actually that sail when we didn't have it, we were pointing into it and that was like our fastest, best sail that we've done. Right. Without the center board. Yeah. So we've actually found it more beneficial to have it not on than to have it on so say something like this where we would maybe put the center board down in order to like balance the boat a little bit we wouldn't do that because it's gonna bang around correct it would be way more annoying than it would be helpful yeah um it causes a lot of drag uh i don't know yeah we wouldn't get as much slippage meaning as you know we're either beam to pointing into the wind, it has a tendency to slide in that direction of the wind. Mm. We would probably have less of that. But Maybe by three or four degrees. Yeah, but honestly, like, we haven't noticed... If we were racing, maybe then we would care, but we really don't. And not having... We actually removed the crank in the cabin yeah. so we don't have this huge mess on our countertop anymore and it just makes it so much nicer not to have that it's freed up a lot of counter space because that's actually kind of quarantined a lot of our or it's taken up a lot of the space up there mm -hmm. because it was so calm i was able to fly the drone a lot i think i put up the drone like <laughs> two or three times this day yeah. Also, not having wind, what <laughs> gave us more time to relax. After sailing for seven days, and we were not even halfway there, it was just a bunch of tacking, a bunch of time taken up, and we were happy for it to not have yeah. any wind. We were, you know, just getting to that point, we, we had gotten a little frustrated with the lack of progress that we were doing. Yeah. And this forced us to just be like, Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just take it as it is, you it know? It was really nice, actually. Very calm. It was a pretty much a full day, but the weather was nice. We were able just to kind of relax, and <laughs> some people commented that, well, one, that seaweed was going faster than we were, <laughs> that we should probably try to speed up, and two, this reminded them a lot of Dead Calm, the movie, and oh, yeah. how Bo looks like Billy Zane from the movie. Yeah, I was plotting um, uh, a massacre, but... Jeez! I, I'm just, just kidding. Jokes. Jeez, Louise. Jokes. But just seeing this vastness around you, you it, without the drone, we would never be able to take in that perspective of how small we are in this big, gigantic sea. And we didn't see any other boats this entire day, I don't think. I 
was nice. We were able to kind of watch a movie and make lunch and just hang out together because we were super wasted. Yeah, if if it was like this out on the sea and we could get resources, I I wouldn't be opposed to like living out on sea <laughs> for months on end. Yeah. It's and very peaceful out there. Other thing, people were very worried about how much food we had on board. <laughs> <laughs> and water. We, so oh, we yeah. do have a water maker. And prior to leaving any big trips, we also have two five-gallon uh, jerry cans that we fill with water. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of like our ditch bag water cans as well. Mm -hmm. So if we do have to abandon boat, we would take those with us. I mean, to be able to sit on the side of the boat and watch the sunset was really, really yeah. awesome. It was serene and calming. Look at our little boat. Yeah. I loved the, this drone work. It was so good. People commented on <laughs> how close to the water Whoop, I got. Here we go. <laughs> oh, you left all this in? Going like that the, close to the yeah the movements and yeah. Stuff. yeah see that's the kind of stuff that I'd like you to cut out. Oh, I'm sorry, you can edit this next time. <laughs> look how small we are. Oh, look at that sun. Oh, and, you wanted the the quote. Oh yeah, quote. somebody gave us a quote. Um, Dave Williard, day after day, day after day, we stuck, nor breath nor motion, as idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean rhyme of the ancient ancient Mar mariner by samuel taylor coleridge that was a really cool Sunset. poem yeah it, it said like he rem it reminded him of it so he left it and i really really liked it it stuck with us for sure with a max of 5.8 so oh. <laughs> yeah drifting all day in somewhat of the right direction So this is where we are now. This is where we started when we dropped the sails. So kind of drifted northwest. Better than backwards. Yeah, better than backwards. But we're going to give... It was interesting to hear how many people go, thought so we should break out oars. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's going to be gigantic oars to carry. That would be exhausting. Somebody recommended us jumping in with a line and swimming for exercise <laughs> it's really weird why we didn't jump in at all it's kind of funny we didn't we i don't have. know like Bo's very apprehensive am i of jumping in no not really i mean i've jumped in yeah but that was because couple you had times. to oh is this the sail where we thought a line was in the water yeah <laughs> we completely like we cut that out because it was out. nothing yeah, so we, we thought we, like, were, I don't know, what we think happened? That we had we a line We thought we had wrapped, a line stuck in our prop or, or, or our rudder. Our rudder, yeah. I think. But, and I was about to jump in the water and then realized it was just one of our sheets. <laughs> so, but we completely cut that out. Yeah. It was kind of non-eventful. Just our stupidity. But he also <laughs> was very apprehensive about wanting to go in, I remember. Yeah, I don't know. It's It can be a little freaky being yeah. in such open water. You never know what's looking at you. I mean, we've had a white tip shark baby follow us once. And I think that that has kind of scarred us for life of that, knowing that mother's out there somewhere. <laughs> that and the crack and all that, you know, yeah. it's just, it's weird. It's eerie. Someone else actually was wondering, well, many people actually wondered why we didn't put a kicker and like kicker board and then mount our dinghy motor to the back end of it so i guess in calm conditions and in like lake like conditions just really flat that would work but you really need to get the pro the prop um low enough to where it's not coming out of the water mm -hmm. and a kicker like that uh I don't know. It just doesn't seem to be the best solution. I guess it's better than no solution. Uh, it would be quite a bit of work just to get one installed. And also, it was very temporary. We knew we were going to be fine doing the sail without a motor. We had the dinghy. We were already prepared to side tie. We had the we had 
the parts going to Florida that we needed to pick up in order to install the motor back in. So to put that on, we it was too much that we didn't feel necessary. Oh, and night dolphins. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, Brandy loves dolphins, right? No. If you couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> These dolphins would only show up at night. On Bo's watch. On my watch. And the first time that it happened, I actually didn't tell Brandy about it because I didn't, one, I didn't want to wake her up. Uh, two, <laughs> I thought it would be better if I didn't tell her. That way she wasn't upset that I didn't wake her up. <laughs> For good reason. Because she was upset when I told her about it. <laughs> I was like, why wouldn't you wake me up? Dolphins. Because I want you to get your sleep. <laughs> oh. But they ended up showing yeah. up multiple nights. Um, and this is just one of the nights that Brandy tried to capture yeah. them. It's really hard to capture on film, unfortunately. Yeah. One you, day the footage will be better. You, you got a little bit. Yeah. You could see them coming up. I mean, even though it's crappy footage, we still want to share the feel of it with you. You know, you can't see them well, but yeah. oh well. Uh, just for some of you guys who don't know, we do have an electric motor. It's a Mott Energy. The whole system is a uh, kit from Thunderstruck, so I put it all together myself. I created the mounting bracket, and I actually reused our old hearth transmission from the diesel that was in Sersha originally. In doing so, we did have a forward neutral reverse, which we didn't need. I just found it cheaper and easier to do that way than buying a whole new assembly or creating a whole new assembly. Actually, that's why we don't have a motor here because there's a coupler that connects the transmission to the motor that was destroyed. And we actually sailed all the way from Jamaica to Guatemala without the motor as well. Yep. And when we realized we were going to go to Florida, we said, well, screw it. Let's just order the part to Florida because it would be a lot less expensive, a lot less likely to get lost or taxed or yeah. a bajillion other things. Right. Just shipping and tax was going to be ridiculous. Yeah. So after a day of being becalmed, we actually were starting to get a lot more wind another day another sail thanks for the coffee <laughs> welcome Did you just put we have in? found that the best time to throw our lines in are the first thing in the morning oh, and just before sunset oh. and i sound like a spoiled baby in this shot because yeah i see the mahi and i'm like Oh, Mahi. <laughs> Ungrateful. So bad. But we had been talking about tuna all morning. And tuna. And we thought it was tuna. Tuna is our favorite. Yeah. My job whenever we catch a fish is to clean up the cockpit. And then I typically go forward to midship and hold on to the yo-yo while Bo then is able to gaff the fish. Um, it's just kind of the system that we've set up. A lot of people talk about how our monkey bar system in the background is a pain in the butt, but to be honest, I actually feel more comfortable having it back there because we I, can lean over it and not feel like we're gonna fall off. Yeah, you have something to grab onto. For Always, sure. it yeah. Kind of keeps you in the boat. So I claim victory on this because I actually put the line in the water. <laughs> victory! But because I did, I felt like maybe it's time I learn how to fillet. And Bo had already filleted one. I've watched him to fillet them all, but I've always been so intimidated that I was going to hack it to pieces and waste anything of it. I thought you didn't like the fact of cutting into the fish. No, I, no? I don't like that part as much either. However, I want to, I want to make sure that we are getting everything from the fish because he's given his life to us and I want to honor him by making sure that everything is, there's no waste. Well, the crabs will eat the rest. But this is the funny thing. We did have a couple comments that, you know, here I am with my bare feet as I'm filleting the fish. 
This knife is so dull, it's a wonder if it even cuts the meat. Maybe I should have had a pair of shoes on. Maybe I shouldn't. And if Bo told me to pull the, stop pulling on the meat one more time, I was going to slap him with the fish. <laughs> or something else. <laughs> stop pulling the meat. Don't pull on the meat. I'm sorry. Don't get your fingers out of it. Look at him watching me with hawk eyes. It's crazy. You, I, I was just trying to be a very um, informative instructor. <laughs> you did a good job, especially for your first mahi. Thanks. It probably took me an hour <laughs> on one side. Good you did good. Thank you. Yeah, looks good too. It took me a while to get the hang of it, but you picked it up really quick. I well, had a good thorough instructor. <laughs> Straight from the deck to the frying pan doesn't get any better. I did a good job. Yeah. I'm proud of myself. I know how to play a lot, you know. So this late in the trip, I start to feel better. My injuries are pretty much healed by this point. And it's all that rest I allowed you to have. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm returning the favor and letting you rest. <laughs> That's why I'm tacking by myself, um, which doesn't always go that smoothly. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it sounds like a train going through our boat when he tacks, though. So it's not like I sleep through it very well. <laughs> yeah likewise with you i'm just a i Heavier sleep sleeper. through it yeah but it's nice at this part of the trip because we actually have wind and we're actually moving forward in the direction that we want to go instead of tack tack tacking And like I mentioned before, it doesn't fail that one of us is sometimes sleeping. It never fails that when one of us is in deep REM, the other one has a line go off. Yeah. And this was the case. Typically, it's Brandy sleeping, it's which typically me. is what's going on here. Yep. But with this setup, we don't really hear the line run because the planer pops up. Yeah. So there's no running. So you don't get that rush of adrenaline like you normally do with the reel going But it does make reeling in the fish a lot easier. Tuna. To our excitement, it was a tuna. <laughs> a big tuna. Probably the biggest tuna we've caught to date. Yeah. I'm not very good with guessing weights, but I want to say it was a probably a 10 pound tuna. Yeah. And we were super excited to get it because all we had been catching was mahi. Wah, wah. And I feel like I was actually shaking because I didn't want it to come off the line because <laughs> I was so excited for it. I remember thinking, oh, I just want this fish because <laughs> I really wanted some sashimi. And this is where a gaff really comes in handy. Um, to gaff a fish out of the water, it's you know pinned on the hook. Whereas if you just try to pull it up by the line and the lure, it's more than likely gonna jump off or, or fall snap. off or snap. Yeah. We've we've had that happen many a time. Because the fish weighs so much, your line can't really handle it out of water. And also I don't think a a, a net net would do really well. Yeah, I don't know. I, we, I I've like never used hard. a net, mm. so I'm not sure. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. As you can see, I'm I mean I'm struggling with the gaff. Man, he's a big boy. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> this is the largest tuna we've ever had. How big this is! Holy crap! He is probably fifteen pounds. Maybe ten, ten pounds. Wow. Ten, fifteen. Bluefin, maybe. I'm really bad with. 
fish species. I'm lucky enough I know it's a tuna. <laughs> I think I called it a, a blue, what I call blue it? Fin, a I'm blue I'm pretty fin. sure. But I sent a picture to our friend Mike, who confirmed it was a black fin. Yeah, and I think later in the, we catch a, a bonito. A bonita. A bonita. And I called it a, a black fin. <laughs> or a blue fin, I don't remember what I called it, but. But, yeah. oh, this, mm. I think people who don't, think they like sushi have never had tuna like people well, yeah. when we when i first thought of tuna i think of canned tuna uh, which does not taste like like fresh tuna at all Bo has literally been trying to get me to eat canned tuna for the last couple of days i don't know why but i i can't well i i can make it taste good <laughs> it's nowhere near what a fresh no. tuna is but mm -mm. It's can't decent. do it. <laughs> I like those. Oh, that was a cool transition. <laughs> Good job, lovey. Thanks. People have commented about how far away that drone shot was, but we typically get that kind of shot in the majority of the drones that yeah. I do. I think um, it was just noticeable, more noticeable yeah. this time because it was so dark. Yeah. Yeah. The boat really pops, yeah. I think. But look at that sky. It's just pink and man. And the contrast between the sky and the ocean. It's just there's nothing like being out there. Just watching it back makes me feel like yeah like emotional <laughs> you guys see it on the screen but to actually be out there and doing it it's just nothing else like it indescribable and we hope that we do a good enough job on portraying as much as possible because i know that it's difficult i mean these days are 24 hours long and you're seeing maybe 30 minutes. Maybe if we're lucky, we can get an hour of three days. So yeah, you guys probably see 10% of our life yeah. that we film on not even like yeah. maybe two, but the in between are a lot of water passing by the sail going by. And as much as we would hope that somebody would watch 24 hours of our videos, I just don't <laughs> think it would be great. And eight of it would be black, you know, <laughs> pitch black. But we appreciate everybody who does watch and people who comment. And comments mean a lot to us because we know what you're wanting to see or how you felt about it. And we love reading them. And I'm so attached to you guys <laughs> because I'm in the comments and I read and I answer as much as I can. And... It's just really special when we actually get to meet some of you guys, too. Mm -hmm. Sushi and a sunset. Talk about living. Oh, our... Pinch me, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than a sunset and tuna fish. Yeah. Good day. It's a good day. That fish was a lot of work. I think you still have fun. I These are the nights that are just... Right here. I don't know. We had a, such a good sail. We, we've had a lot of a, a, a string of really good sails. I think the I'll, longer the sail, the lo yeah, it's almost been better. Well, I think it's our men mental state going into it too. We've been through enough. We've gained more experience on knowing how to set up the boat correctly and knowing how to prepare for the sails correctly. And yeah, not being stressed out when we heal over. Yeah, or <laughs> just in general, just. <laughs> Taking things as they are and, and dealing with the situations as they come. <laughs> Too much wasabi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when wasabi hits the roof of your mouth and like into your nose, you get that like shock and your eyes just start to tear up. It's like the best feeling and the worst feeling all at once. Bo likes to eat wasabi by the spoonful. Yeah, I, I love just like really bold, harsh flavors. We're in a current. The current was something that 
we had heard other people talk about, but we weren't sure what to expect. So once we got in it, it was like being shot out of cannon. <laughs> also, the wind had picked up, so that made for a more wet and wild ride for sure. Yeah, it was very wet, especially not having a Dodger. You can see I'm standing way back in the cockpit just to avoid getting constantly splashed, uh, just to not say as salty. Look at those waves. And that's the thing with the waves. You cannot tell on Camera. frame. Yeah. You can't tell how bad they are. It's crazy. We probably saw, what, 10-foot waves, I would yeah. say? Those are probably the largest we saw. Maybe they were bigger. We're, I don't know. We're not the best at gauging wave heights. But it's so in, it, it's so interesting because from when we first started to now, saying, yeah, we went through 10-foot waves. They were probably bigger, but that's no problem, you know? I remember first thinking if we were healed, well, I remember when we would be healed over, I would be flipping out because I thought we were overpowered, which we probably were, but it just felt super uncomfortable. But over the years of sailing Sersha, she has taken care of us and we know her limits and we try to take care of her as much as possible. Well, we were definitely pushing her limits doing this. We got up to 14.1 knots, yeah. which is absurd. Like, and that's just what um, Navionics told us. We actually never really saw, I never personally saw that on the GPS. Mm -hmm. uh, the most I saw on the GPS was what, 10 or 11 knots? Oh, really? Something like that. I don't know, we were going pretty darn fast and it was enough to where our autopilot was having issues keeping up with it. So Bo had to fix that, which helped tremendously because after that he was able to keep up with it. In the future, we do want to get a Ram-driven autopilot. One, it's going to be less noisy. Two, it's going to be able to handle heavier seas. And three, I think the wheel pilot is really putting a strain on our helm. And we're, we're getting deformation because of it. It's deforming one of the gears in there. And that's where a lot of friction is happening while we're trying to hand steer. Uh, you probably noticed it in some of our previous videos, but that is the culprit, is the wheel pilot. Man, look at that, that view just bashing and it kind of reminds me of going back down to Grenada. Yeah. It's funny because I had not seen Bo standing back there. And then when I went back to start editing this, I'm like, that's so funny that we both had the same idea to hang out on the back and just lean up against the monkey bar system and stay dry. I just kind of stood back there. I was still there. getting splashed. Yeah, yeah, I was too. I just stood back there and listened to music. It was kind of cool. It was kind of like you were helming the boat from Man, back there. See that shock? Mm -hmm. Like of just hitting the wave. I just remember thinking, I, I mean, I can touch the water here. We do have a very small freeboard, but we just being out here totally remakes. Being out here makes you respect Mother Nature, the water, the power of the ocean seas. It's very humbling. Humbling. Yes, that's a good <laughs> word. Good way to put it for sure. Yeah, but it is fun sailing in this kind of conditions. Because or you're little, moving. Yeah. Well, just like when you're in it, it seems like you're just going so fast when you're really, <laughs> you're, you're crawling, you know, it's not very fast. Yeah. We had already put in two reefs earlier that day and Bo's putting a third one in. We had changed out our head sail overnight and I think having the smaller sails up and the least amount made this so much more comfortable. It leveled out, Sersha. And yes, I should have been strapped in, but like I Once said before, again. I was being lazy. You weren't being lazy. I'm pretty sure I remember this is the, the part where I handed you your belt and you handed it back to me. <laughs> being defiant. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I, I, I came up with the excuse that it was in the way, but that's not a good excuse. So remember how I said right at sunset and right at sunrise is the best time to put our lures in. Here, we're going so fast. I think this is what happened to this tuna. <laughs> we're going so fast that, well, we ended up needing to share him with a shark. Yeah. Or some other very large <laughs> creature. It was definitely a shark, yeah. for sure. Um, I think right there off the coast of Mexico, it, it is sharky waters. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we only got a, a head and a little bit of meat. We did get two steaks out of it, though. Yeah, we surprisingly. Had we had plenty to eat. And this is actually not the first time that we've caught a shark tuna. We've caught... Yeah, south of Puerto Rico. Uh, yep. St. Croix. Oh, St. Croix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is also very mind-blowing that we're sitting here talking about this trip from Guatemala to Florida, knowing that we've already sailed almost, if not 10,000 miles, and where we have went and who we have met and the places we have experienced, it's just been spectacular. I don't know what the word is that... It, we, we've lived a lot in a short time. Put it that way. We, we've done a lot in a short time. It's unreal. So you saw us in the cabin both together. We were poking our heads out uh, periodically while we are cooking. And it's tough cooking in those kind of conditions. So you kind of need two people yeah, to you, help. Yeah, you need four hands for sure to hold pots and pans and stuff. And it started getting really cold. So on my shift, here's a telltale sign when something's gonna change. A brisk, cold wind heads your way you, then you know ish is about to hit the fan. Yep. <laughs> so here I ended up heaving too because Bo was sleeping and we were already reefed in enough as we could and there was really nothing else I could do. Well, we do have a storm sail for the head yeah. that we could have busted out. But we chose not to. <laughs> but when I was in... The cabin, I told Bo, I was like, isn't this the first time we've heaved two during a storm? And he answered me, but we've had this conversation since we published this, and he doesn't re you don't yeah, remember. Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> responding. <laughs> I was just dead to the world. Yeah. It actually d didn't turn out to be a horrible storm, but it was still a good move for me to feel comfortable to go ahead and just heave two, let it ride out. That way, Bo wasn't completely dead tired trying to helm through. We were already going eight knots to helm through a storm and fast wind and strong waves yeah. and a current. <laughs> we're in no rush. No. This isn't a race. And at this point, we were already going, making more mileage than we had in the nine days prior to this. Yeah. This, our longest sail ever was nine days. So this actually marks our longest sail to date. To date. Um, being at 10. So we extended that extra. <laughs> a couple more days. Yeah. Did I catch another fish? I think you did. Oh, catch? this is the Oh, this is the Bonita. Bonita. I think I called it a black fin or a blue fin. <laughs> I was dead wrong about that. <laughs> it was obviously a Bonita. I don't know what I was thinking. You were just... Lack yeah. of sleep? I don't know. Just... Yeah, I'm not thinking straight. And we have a rule that if the line isn't in, we can't catch a fish. So as soon as Bo caught the bonita, I threw the line in and well, we hooked a mahi as soon as it went in. <laughs> we were going fast and the fish love when we go fast. If yeah, we go the, seven knots, it's good. There's a lot of excitement, um, and they like that. Yes. Yeah. I was really hoping for a wahoo. Wahoo loves going fast, like seven to ten knots. And we haven't caught a wahoo since but, uh, Dominican what? Republic. DR, yep. And that was 2019? See how I pulled the fish out with the line? 
Uh, this this fish is small enough to where if you if you whip it up like that, it's it's no big deal. Sometimes. But sometimes, but big fish, eh, not so much. The waves had not calmed down at all. We were still flying, and Ooh. yep, that was a big one. Got a little bit of one in the cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> Which, That's. You know, why would you want a Dodger? You don't get to experience that salt water <laughs> yeah. on your face and right. cold rush of wind. Wind. <laughs> why would you so want to sail comfortably? <laughs> <laughs> Who <laughs> needs a Dodger? We're totally joking. We would I love <laughs> a Dodger. It would, it would make life a little more comfortable. And since we know that this is the life for us and this is what we want to continue to do, we are slowly piecing together more creature comforts. Yeah, the, when we left for the Bahamas, man, we didn't have the water maker. We didn't have an autopilot. We didn't have... And we didn't even have the skills or the knowledge. <laughs> so we, we've slowly, thanks to the help with the, of a lot of, a lot of people... We've been slowly gathering these things. In these types of conditions, um, sometimes it's beneficial to go ahead and hand steer. Bo had taken us off course a little bit in order for it to not be so destructive on the boat. And I have a little bit of PTSD from our experience going from Puerto Rico to Grenada where we experienced the crack in the hull. And that was a lot of bashing into the waves. And we so were pointing a lot. We were more. pointing a lot. This was more a beam reach. Yeah. So it wasn't as bad, but for me, I still feel I would rather not hear the slamming. Oh, yeah, 100%. If we can keep the boat from jarring, mm -hmm. then that's ideal. The night prior to this, we both spent time hand steering. Yep. And thank goodness for the, the moon. That's when the moon really comes into play. Yeah, because you can see the face of the wave to surf down. <laughs> Unlike what I used to think, waves don't come only in one direction. They come in three different directions. You've got swell on this side. You've got swell on that side. You've got a wave here. Depending on what that is doing, you either are going to have a smooth sail or a washing machine sail. And this was a it little was a bit washing machine-ish. Machine yeah. And now, because of how strong it's been, we're back on a routine of pretty much sleep, helm, eat. <laughs> I remember the times when we had no autopilot. That's pretty much how it was. Yeah, it was just more exhausting because being behind the wheel is tiring. Especially with stronger winds. Because you have to focus on what you're doing. Typically, I don't wear shoes while on board or helming, but over these long trips, I've found that wearing shoes helps. And we actually have vessies, which are waterproof. So it keeps our feet dry, dry which makes it even better. For the most part, um, as long as water doesn't come in through the ankle, they'll stay dry. Yeah, which with the spray, you're pretty much okay. Yeah. And there's nothing else like having water diluge over the, your bow and over your tow rails to find leaks in your boat and things that are broken yeah. <laughs> with the rough waves. So when we get to Florida, we know how many things that we're going to oh, have to man, fix. There's so many things. The <laughs> list never ends. On long passages, you, you're bound to break something. Which actually, I think we did pretty well. The only thing that really broke of any concern was the outhaul and one other but we'll tell you about that later yes if you're a patreon you already know so if you want to be in the know <laughs> definitely sign up for our patreon community we do regular real-time updates there The wind died overnight, and I took the advantage of making some coffee and breakfast, which, funny enough, when we're on land, and by land I mean anchored, anchored, um, we don't typically eat breakfast, so I'm not really sure why we eat breakfast. I think we eat breakfast because 
having a full belly is comfortable. Like, and we're trying to be as comfortable as possible. You just, I, I feel better when I have a full belly. Then why don't we eat breakfast on a normal basis then? Because our butter coffees fill me up. Well, we have butter coffees under sale too. I don't know. Maybe I just like stuffing myself while we're sailing. I think it's just become a routine because for me, even though I don't typically eat breakfast when we go sailing, t usually if it's just one day, five days, whatever, I have to eat before we leave. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. So I think that's kind of where it started. I was pretty grouchy here. I was like, leave me alone. I'm <laughs> sleeping. Because literally, I let Brandy sleep in until 7. You did? Yep. Which was fine because I can enjoy myself. You can. I can. Yeah. And I don't always have to be around. No. It sometimes is nice when... A lot of people have pointed out, how do you guys do it with just the two of you in that tiny space for 14 days? Well, I mean, we see each other, but we sometimes we don't see each other. You're either sleeping or helming sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Or sometimes it's just you're or chilling. You're, yeah, you're enjoying each other. Yeah, Genuinely, tend to do. <laughs> yeah, we generally enjoy each other's company yeah. while we're eating or watching something. Or just hanging out. Yeah, just hanging out. And then... Your my babies show up. <laughs> your babies. <laughs> your friends. My friends. Somebody in the comments said, just let him sleep, man. And I... <laughs> the thing is, we have a rule that we do not go forward. Have I already mentioned this? Yeah, you have. We don't go forward. Without somebody else. In the cockpit. Yeah. So... Sorry, um, dolphins definitely override Bo's sleep. I think he ignored me for a good I did. 15 minutes. <laughs> but then I eventually did get up. I wish I had a longer stick for my GoPro. I couldn't keep the stick down long enough in order to capture them swimming under the water. Those were cool shots, though. Oh, man, they I, were the best. I really like those. Yeah. <laughs> I was just coming in and out, in and out of the water with the GoPro. And I think at this point, we wanted to put the drone up, but we couldn't get it up on time, I think. I think we were having some Oh, we were having connection, connection issues. issues. Yeah. But they came in. They were they, gone pretty quick. Really? Yeah, this oh. round. They came back, though. They right? did come back. Yeah. Because they came back pretty quickly, and we rose... We raised the drone. We were able to get it up. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. I think, oh my gosh, they're just so pretty. So having researched these guys, I had never seen the speckled ones before. The, oh I believe, so. I'm not a research, I'm not a scientist, but Why? two of them were juveniles. And the one that doesn't have spots was a baby. And the more speckles they have, the older in age they are. So the first round, I think there was a mom or a dad along with the group, but then only the three came back. And so I think it was two adolescents and a baby, which was really cool to, like, to find out. We want to go play again. Yeah. We did our chores. Can yeah. we go play? Yeah. <laughs> it was really cool to see them as always. And I wanted to mention this in the video, but I didn't because I get all emotional and I'm probably going to get emotional now. But I always think of Una when they show up, like she's coming to say hi, that yeah. she's hanging out with her friends. And yeah, Una, if you guys haven't been watching a long time, was our pup that sailed with us for our first three years. She was 13 and she passed away at 16. She was the best, best salty dog ever. Yeah, she was super <laughs> chill. Yeah, we miss her a bunch. Yeah. So the one thing it's really hard to capture is on the drone to get them in brightness along with the boat. So there's a lot of times where the boat was just so blown out trying to get the dolphins in the water because it's so dark. But I think Bo did a good job. You did a good yeah, job. Yeah, the 
yeah, getting the contrast right was difficult. Yeah. And there's not a lot of adjustment within the drone that you can adjust a few things. Mm-hmm. And plus flying the thing. Yeah, I'm not really paying too much attention to it. But, you know. You had saw... Room it, for improvement. In one spot, you see a red and white buoy. And I tell Bo, oh, look, it's a Pokeball. Yeah, which... so... If you guys don't know, I I like to play Pokemon Go because I'm a nerd. Um, And Brandy likes to make fun of me. So any chance she can, she likes to give me a little jab. I just thought that it was the funniest thing to see this white and red ball out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it was pretty hilarious, actually. (laughs) It's our last night. The moon's not up yet, but we're trucking along. Some of you guys may not know this, but the Gulf of Mexico is pretty shallow compared to everywhere else that we've been. It's only a few hundred feet deep. So I can imagine it gets pretty gnarly uh, during like storm conditions and stuff. But just being in that shallow of water, I don't know. It just, I guess it kind of eases your mind a bit because you're not that deep. No, Does not it? so much. I don't know. <laughs> that is another. Here's another thing where people. Here's another thing where you think, man, deep, deep, deep water. I don't know. I guess I don't think either way. Yeah, I guess it's not scarier. I, or, I mean, maybe water in is the Bahamas real, where you can see the ground. Yeah, where it's only twenty. That's sailing feet. under you. You yeah. know that you look like you're sailing on a glass. It makes a difference, but out here because there are no obstacles or anything it doesn't really i think i don't really know the difference (laughs) i don't really pay attention to the difference we are already outside of the gulf stream at this point so we had kind of lost a little bit of wind but we were still we got so lucky with the wind we got a south wind southwest wind that we were going to be able to probably sail into the anchorage if we really wanted to and at this point we were sailing on a broad reach, which is one of our favorites to sail. So it just made it so much easier that we didn't have to be beating into it. Because at this point, we've mentioned on the radar had been a northern wind coming in, which calls for more storm conditions. You just don't really want to be out in the water when there's a north, especially with this calm, these shallow waters now that you talk about that. Right. But... I think we were really experiencing the giddiness because I think around this time we started seeing the buildings. Yeah, buildings and buoys and just, I guess, uh, civilization. Yeah, and it just made it more (laughs) surreal that we were coming back to Florida. I had never really visioned, envisioned that we would be sailing back to Florida. And even at this point, not this soon. But we thought we not. We were gonna come see family. We would be able to pick stuff up. We'd be able to maybe do some work on the boat. Um, maybe meet up with some other friends and stuff. So it was kind of a not bad, but it wasn't. It was good and apprehensive because we had flown. We've flown back to the states a couple times, so you get that hustle and bustle and overload. Whereas we're not used to that so much, being out, especially 14 days at sea. I guess for me, um, I, I don't know. We, we, we make plans to do things, but half the time we end up doing something else. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't know that it really sank in for me, uh, good or bad. It just was what we were doing. It, yeah, I was definitely happy to go back and, and see people and get some things for the boat. But in the same sense, like kind of what Brandy was pointing on is like, not sure if it meant like the, like not a failure, but like our ultimate goal is to get to the South Pacific. So this is kind of a delay. It We're not getting there as soon as we thought we would but that's okay because we don't think Sersha is going to be the boat 
that actually gets us there. So with our boat, our chain likes to tackle on itself. No, pile. Pile. Pile up on itself. And after that big rough sail that we just had. Yeah, heavy seas, um, the way the chain gets in the chain locker, it, it kind of falls on itself and locks itself into place. <laughs> I can't believe we're this close. We were being silly because we were like trying to capture pictures and things of us sailing with the drone because we don't ever really get big pictures with Sersha and us. So we were trying to get like a little shot, so we put it in there. Why not? <laughs> yeah, just, you know, just for us yeah. kind of thing. This was, in my opinion, probably the most stressful part of the, the sale. And I think I even say that in this part of the video because we knew we had to drop this dang dinghy and the motor and the coast of Florida there's not a lot of places that you can tuck up into outside of going into the inner coastal waterway, which is very protected. Yeah. But to get in there, you're hugging the shore really close. Yeah. Even though we had proper wind in order to do so, we that couldn't wasn't a risk it. Yeah, it wasn't a guarantee because when you get into these cuts, wind get it gets cut off by buildings and land and such. So we didn't know what to expect. This is our first time through this area. Yeah. We had never been on the west coast of Florida. We left on the east coast. So this is kind of like a circumnavigation of the Caribbean back to Florida with some parts cut off. We just like taking the time to have clear communication with each other because I wasn't sure where Bo wanted me to drop the anchor. So having him physically point out where we wanted to go really helps. And I'm just guessing. She's looking for me for guidance and I don't really know. So I'm just like, ah, that looks good. He doesn't know until we're actually up close yeah. to the eye area. There's a lot of shoaling and we weren't aware. We, we wanted to be as safe as possible. Just the west coast of Florida is notorious for shoaling in general. It's very, very shallow waters. And of course, the moment that we decided that we were gonna anchor, the wind picked up tremendously. And I think it was probably our point of sail too. And the waves picked up. And the up. waves, yeah. So needless to say, we weren't being the nicest to each other, trying to drop this dinghy and motor in. Yeah, it was very stressful and we did our best, but... We spared you guys uh, <laughs> the frustration yeah. that we had with the situation and we took it out on each other. Even getting the anchor back up was a struggle. Brandy yeah. again was trying to sail up anchor mm -hmm. to... Um, get off the anchor, yeah. which took quite a bit, yeah, right? Yeah, it was, a, it was, a, we were literally on the beach. <laughs> yeah. I could have like, swam to shore for sure. I could have stood up in yeah. the water we were in. Yeah. And that didn't help the sea state at mm -hmm. all. And not that we like to work against time, but we knew that the current was going in for only so long and we were just at the point of where it was going to be switching to where we would have had a fight current going in or we would have had a sat and wait outside all night and at this point we just wanted to get there so even as crappy as the situation was we knew that we could do it and it got done so currently we're trying to navigate into so we definitely needed eyes everywhere because of the shoaling in this area and we know from past experience not necessarily in florida shoaling likes to move around <laughs> so i was inside reading the depths and Bo was outside looking at the depths and we were just keeping our eyes peeled and the map going in we were kind of showing that because actually one of you guys have requested a couple of you had requested maybe showing our route in let us know in the comments if that's something that you guys enjoy, like seeing more of like 
the bird eye view of us moving. I so wanted Bo to be able to put up the drone, but it was so stressful getting in here. And it was gusty. Yeah. So we're almost past the, the four foot mark to, the, to our uh, north. So we'll be able to turn in a, a couple minutes here. Breakers that are up there. Happening here. Yeah, this is, so this is us going in and showing the, how close the shore is to us. You guys probably, it doesn't look like it's that close, but for us, who we're so used to open ocean that, you know, sailing in these situations is, is really stressful for us because we're just not used to being close to stuff. And the depths as well. I mean, it was nice and knowing we don't have the motor. However, Bo is deciding to go ahead and side tie. Yeah. But we had the wind. We, we were. Yeah, we did. We got lucky with the wind for sure. Yeah. And you got, we didn't show it because Brandy couldn't get it in time. But there were dolphins <laughs> actually following us in. I was trying not to be distracted. Yeah. So I didn't bother <laughs> but we ended up sailing the entire way yeah all yeah. the way in yeah and brandy did a really good job i was in the dinghy with it on idle just in case because we were so close to everything um we didn't want to have to throw anchor or struggle in that way yeah. i mean this one was you know the, the beach was right there and we Reading the charts was even difficult to see what route I was supposed to take. <laughs> I almost like ran us into the seawall because I didn't almost, no, but I was heading far that away. way. But, in yeah. my head, we were supposed to go behind the seawall. However, it was in front of the seawall. I would have figured it out eventually, but just wanted to show, you know, even after four and a half years of sailing and being away, doing this day in, day out, we still get very nervous or very alert and aware of what we're doing with the boat and how she's moving and especially in this kind of condition of not having the motor running well i'd be afraid if we didn't because at that point then we'd be reckless you know that we mm -hmm. have to have an air of caution to us to a degree right maybe not overreacting but being able to assess the situation and and handle it yeah we were just so excited to finally get there. <laughs> <laughs> I was so stoked to finally drop anchor because it just meant, okay, we, we made it. it. We did it. It took forever. But we did but it. But we did it. Yep. And we didn't kill each other, which it's just so funny. I, I don't even know why I said that because we really enjoy it. And, and honestly, I was sad that it was over. Yeah, I do look forward to these big trips. Yeah. They're they're a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, and we anchored literally with mansions around <laughs> us. I we stayed there a long time and I yeah. think they they were a little upset that we were there so long, <laughs> but hey, they don't own the water. You guys, we wanted to say a big thank you for listening to our commentary of our 14-day sale. And, and a huge shout out to our patrons. You guys are amazing. Yes. Thank you for all your support. And it, yeah, all of you guys for watching for the last four and a half years. Let us know if you've been following us since the beginning in the comments. We really like to know who's been hanging out and following along or if you've been watched or if you just started. It's just we're so grateful for everybody watching and we can't wait till more adventures come. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.